While title is technically not a tag, but rather an HTML element, it is often referred to as a tag in SEO contexts. An internal analysis that Google performed on their very own Google product pages found that over 90% of those pages could improve their SEO simply by optimizing the title tag. Since Google emphasizes titles in blue text, they are the first element searchers can scan on SERPs. Titles play a big role in determining whether searchers will click on a particular listing. They are also one of the most important on-page SEO factors, and when others link to your pages organically, they tend to use the page titles as anchor text. It's important to mention that just as with AdWords, the title of a SERP snippet has the biggest influence on CTR. Moreover, because SERP CTR and dwell time are now parts of RankBrain, it's very important to aim for better click-through rates on your organic results. Higher than average CTRs and longer dwell times are quality signals used by search engines. The SERP title myth. Many otherwise knowledgeable webmasters and even a few SEOs believe that the content of the title tag is the only source Google uses to generate and display the SERP titles. Yes, most of the time, the content of the title page is displayed in SERPs, as you can see in this screen cap. However, the SERP title is not based solely on what is wrapped within the HTML title tag. Google's goal is to be relevant, so it is expected that they will not blindly use just the content of the title tag to generate the most relevant snippets for users. For example, let's say you forgot to add the product name in the title tag, and someone searches for that product. Google might classify the page as highly relevant for that search query due to great content and backlinks. However, since the page title is missing, displaying an empty title will be a poor experience. In this case, Google will use other sections on the page to extract and display a title that is more useful to the searcher. In this example, they will most likely include the product name in the SERP title. A very common question is, why is Google changing, rewriting, or not indexing my title tag properly? As mentioned, Google's goal is to provide the most relevant titles for searchers. Google will use various data sources and signals to accomplish this. They will analyze the page content and look for external relevant signals to match a user query with relevant content extracted from a page. Here are a few scenarios that may trigger search engines to alter SERP titles. A malformed title tag. Titles that are too short or too long. A page blocked by robots.txt, but with many backlinks related to the search query. Getting a different title in the SERPs than the one in the HTML code does not mean that Google indexed your pages or titles incorrectly. It just means that the search query determines whether your HTML title tag is displayed. Since we are discussing titles and CTRs, I would like to touch on concepts such as SERP CTR, SERP bounce rate, dwell time, and pogo sticking. SERP CTR is the click-through rate on organic search results. Search bounce rate is a bounce that happens when searchers click on a SERP result and go back to the initial SERP without interacting with the content on the page they clicked on. That is not necessarily a bad thing, depending on how much time the searchers spent on the website. Dwell time is the amount of time that a searcher spends on a page before returning to the SERPs. Pogo sticking is defined as going back and forth between a SERP and the web pages listed in the results. All these are crowdsourced metrics used by search engines to self-evaluate the quality of their results. For example, if a spam page managed to rank first for a competitive keyword, but it does not get enough clicks because users easily identify its SERP snippet as spam as soon as they see it in the listing, that page may be deemed irrelevant in regards to the keyword. Similarly, if a page ranked number one for a particular keyword gets many clicks, but almost everyone bounces back within a second, that gets picked by search engines, most likely by RankBrain in Google's case. Search engines may reduce the rankings of that page 
because it is not useful for users and because of very low dwell time. In an older crowdsource test I ran years ago, the rankings of the targeted URL went up from number 16 to number 12 for a long tail keyword after test participants clicked on the URL in the SERP, visited a couple of pages, and spent time on the test website. However, since this was not a large scale experiment, it is possible that the fluctuation was just due to personalization or natural fluctuations. However, if you think about it, it makes sense for search engines to test and analyze how users react to different results and to adjust results and algorithms based on SERP CTR and dwell time. Although it has not been officially confirmed, Matt Katz suggests in a video that Google takes clicks into account when they test new algorithms on live results. Remember, there is a metric that Google uses internally to measure the quality of their results, the long click. And I quote, this occurred when someone went to a search result, ideally the top one, and did not return. This means Google has successfully fulfilled the query. The ideal scenario is to finish the search on your website. That is the ultimate quality signal you can send to search engines. Consider the following suggestions for improving the effectiveness of your titles. Title tag and H1 matching. One way to reinforce the relevance of a product page is to partially match the title tag with the H1. When doing this, both elements should contain the product name. This partial match is a good idea because H1 and title should be conceptually related, but not the same. Optimize your title tags for better SERP CTR and the H1 for conversion and reassurance. On PDPs, the product name is usually wrapped in an H1 and can be a pattern along the lines of the following examples. You can use the H1 product naming convention in the title tag as well, but you need to change it a bit. For instance, by adding modifiers such as buy, online, free shipping, or your business name. In this example, you can see how the title tag is different from the H1. Since the product name in H1 is very short, the title tag can easily be complemented with other useful product attributes. Keep in mind that the keywords in the title tag should accurately reflect the page content and should also be present in the main content area. A side note about the title tag for category pages. When a category page lists subcategories, either in the faceted navigation or the main content area, the title tag can include some of the most important subcategories. This is especially important when category names are very short. This screenshot shows the SERP for the Women Dresses query. The title tag for Nordstrom includes cocktail dresses and maxi dresses. This approach works best for top-level categories with short names. Keyword Significance Consolidation This tactic works only for e-commerce websites that focus just on a particular product line or in a specific niche. The tactic will help you increase the significance of your main keyword which in return will create more relevance around your website for that particular product line or niche. Here are the steps you need to take. On the home page, place the main keyword at the very beginning of the title tag. Use the main keyword towards the end of the title tag on every page of the website, even if the title becomes longer than 65 characters or 500 pixels. Mention the keyword in the main content area on each page of the website. If your pages are content rich, repeat the keyword every 250 words. Consolidate the contextual anchor text from internal pages to point to the home page. For example, if speedboat parts is your most important keyword, then each page on your website should contain the keyword speedboat parts in the main content and the first instance of speedboat parts should link to the home page. This is a screenshot from a Google Search Console account before Google removed the keywords report. It shows the keyword significance for a website that sells just ShopRider scooters. 
Notice how ShopRider and Scooters are the most significant keywords on this website. The website ranks in the top 5 for ShopRider Scooters in Canada, close to ShopRider's official website. In the past, you could have downloaded this list to find keyword variations as well. That was a pretty useful report to understand how Google groups keywords, but unfortunately it has been discontinued. Just a quick note here. Keyword significance is not the same as keyword density. Keyword significance is measured at the domain level, while keyword density is measured at the page level. Geotargeting. Usually, e-commerce websites ship nationwide or even internationally. However, there are cases when you cannot ship outside a geographical region due to regulatory restrictions. For example, if you sell wine in Canada, you are not allowed to ship interprovincially. If you sell only to a specific region, province or city, you can mention that in the title tag to increase the chances of showing up for a geo-personalized search query. In this example, you can see how the URL ranked second contains the city name in the title tag, while the URL at the bottom of page one doesn't. If you are a retailer with multiple locations, build separate landing pages for each store location. The store address should be placed in the title tag, and the landing pages should reinforce the store locations with mention of surrounding landmarks or with geotagged images. At the minimum, the address in the title should include the city and state or province. Holiday specific titles. Searchers' behavior and the queries they use change around major holidays and events such as Boxing Day, Mother's Day, or Halloween. It will be useful for searchers and for SEO if you can update the title tag to accommodate these changes. For example, around Valentine's Day, the title Valentine's Gifts for Her, All Items on Sale and Free Shipping is more enticing and relevant to users than Gifts for Her, All Items on Sale and Free Shipping. You can see the tactic in action in this screenshot. Tiffany updated the page title to match user intent before Valentine's Day. Character count and pixel length. Google does not index just 65 characters from titles. It only displays about 65 characters in the SERP title or the corresponding length in pixels. In fact, Google indexes as many as 1000 characters from the title tag. Knowing this opens the door to experiments such as thinking of your titles in blocks rather than a single 65 character unit. For example, it may be worth testing titles made of two blocks. The first block of about 65 characters is where you craft your perfect title. This block will include category and subcategory names, product names, branding, calls to action, and so on. Think of this as the title you would write if you were to follow the 65 character limit. Ideally, this will be the title seen by searchers on SERPs. The second block will contain second tier keywords such as product attributes, model numbers, stock availability, plurals, synonyms, and so on. You could eventually repeat the most important keyword for your website at the very end of the title on pages other than the homepage. If the title is a complete sentence and you want the entire sentence to show up in the SERP, it is best to keep that sentence under 65 characters. Branded titles. When I refer to branded titles, I refer to using your brand name, not the other brands that you might be selling. The decision of whether to add your brand name to the title tag depends on various factors such as the goal of your organic search campaigns, for example, branding versus rankings. It also depends on how strong your brand is offline. And it also depends on the authority of your website. I usually recommend not placing the brand at the beginning of the title tag. However, the final placement should consider the following. If you have a well-established brand and a more than decent website authority, you can place the brand at the beginning of the title tag. 
If you try to build a brand, place it at the beginning of the title. If your brand has only some recognition and your goal is to drive unbranded traffic, you should add the brand name at the end of the title tag. If your brand is not known or if you do not care about branding, don't include your brand name in the title at all. Big names like Amazon include their brand name right at the beginning of the tag. This tactic works for recognizable brands as they rely less on page titles for SEO reasons. Sometimes Google will change the title tag to append the brand name either at the end or beginning whenever it believes it makes sense for users. In this example, you can see how a search for engagement rings returns Costco's website with the brand name at the end of the title. However, if you look at the screen cap from their HTML code, you will notice that the title doesn't include the brand name. So Google decided to add it to make the results more appealing to searchers. Keyword prominence. The term prominence refers to the closeness of the keywords to the beginning of the title tag. On category pages, start the title with the category name. On product detail pages, start with the product name. But why is prominence important? Firstly, search engines assign more weight to words at the beginning of the title. Secondly, Western readers skim text from left to right, and it is important to reassure them that the page is relevant by placing the category or product name at the beginning. Keyword proximity. Proximity refers to how close words are to each other. If your targeted keyword is women's dresses, you should not place other words between women's and dresses. For example, the title women's casual and formal dresses is not ideal. Instead, it should be women's dresses, casual, formal, going out and more styles at your brand name. Just a quick note about category names. When deciding on category names, do some basic search volume research. This is a screenshot from Google Keyword Planner and it shows that women's dresses has significantly more search volume than women's dresses. The importance of keyword prominence seems to have decreased after the Hummingbird update, as Google is not focusing on exact match keywords as much as it used to. However, it is still advisable not to break apart important words, such as category or subcategory names. User Intent Modifiers User intent keyword modifiers are words that can be placed before or after the targeted keywords to attract searchers at a specific buying stage. Based on user intent, search queries can be categorized into three main categories, informational, transactional, and navigational. We discussed user intent in detail in the keyword research section. There, we saw that while the vast majority of search queries are not transactional, Informational and navigational queries are still valuable because they can assist conversions. Hence, e-commerce websites should make efforts to capture consumers with relevant content at each buying stage. One way of clarifying the purpose of a page to users is to include user intent keyword modifiers in the title tag. You can include transactional modifiers such as buy, sale, discount, or cheap, on category and product detail pages. Navigational modifiers can be included on store location pages. You can add the brand name on About Us and Contact Us pages. Educational modifiers such as Learn, Discover, Read, Find, or Guide can be included on shopping guide pages. In some cases, you will find that words have different search volumes and even different meanings if arranged in a different order. For example, dog toys has a different meaning than toys dog, and it also has a different search volume. When the order of words creates different meanings, you might need to create separate landing pages. Singular versus plural. It is known that using the same keyword more than twice in the title tag may raise spam flags. However, is the plural form of the keyword considered a repetition? When search engines analyze the content of a document, 
they use a process called stemming. That means that they strip words to their root form. If you view the matter from this angle, the plural variation can be considered a repetition. Although Google will treat singular and plural words as different words, I would not recommend using singulars and plurals in the same title. That is because there is more than just stemming when it comes to plural or singular. There is user intent. Generally speaking, search queries containing a plural suggests that users are looking for a list of items rather than just one particular item. Moreover, in some instances, the same word can have different meanings in singular versus plural. I recommend using the plural on listing pages or shopping guides and the singular on PDPs. The title on a category page can read Canon Digital SLR Cameras. For a product detail under this category, the title will read Canon EOS 60D 18 megapixels CMOS digital SLR camera with 3 inch LCD body only. In computing, words such as and, or, the, or in are named stop words. Since these were usually deemed non essential for relevance scoring until the Hummingbird update, search engines used to filter them out when analyzing and classifying documents. Use a natural language to create your titles, and if that means including stop words, don't sweat it, you're good. You should pay attention if your CMS automatically removes stop words from titles and URLs, because some stop words are important for users. For instance, if you sell music online, and the CMS automatically removes the word that from the band name Take That, you will end up with a very suboptimal page title. Word separators. The word separator most used by SEOs is the pipe sign, but symbols such as hyphens and even commas are good choices too. Google suggests not to use underscores, and I would also recommend staying away from the following special characters. Some websites use catchy titles with a lot of non alphabetical symbols, as in this example, to grab searchers' attention and possibly higher CTRs. Keep in mind that the use of special symbols may get you a better CTR, but might also result in spam flags. Character savers. If you need to squeeze in more text, you can replace certain words with their corresponding symbols. For example, the word and with the ampersand symbol, or the word with with the slash symbol, or the word copyright with the copyright symbol. Remember to implement special characters using HTML entities. Other great space saving options are abbreviations and shorter synonyms. The decision on which version of the keyword to use in the title has to be based on the search volume for those keywords and also on the content targeted on the page. Calls to action. A page that ranks second but has a great compelling CTA in the title could theoretically grab more clicks than the page ranked first if that first page has a poor title. Remember that one of the most important elements tested in advertising and conversion rate optimization is the headline. On SERPs, your headline is the title. CTAs include action verbs, unique selling points or promotional words. Sometimes promotions can heavily affect CTR. An example of a promotional title is All Digital Cameras 60% Off. Competitive Differentiators and Free Shipping If you know that your target market is sensitive to a particular feature or benefit that is part of your unique selling proposition, use that to attract more clicks on your listing and to differentiate yourself from competitors. You can do the same if you have a competitive edge, for example, if you are the exclusive retailer for a product or line of products. Free shipping is extremely exciting for shoppers, and Zappos features that prominently in their page titles. This tactic works for conversion as well for better SERP CTR. Test titles SEO testing is theoretically possible, but very hard to statistically conclude 
since search engines involve a lot of uncontrolled variables. However, title tag variations are one of the easiest SEO tests you can run. Here are some ideas for your tests. Place your brand at the beginning or end of the title. Add one or more important product attributes to the product name. Add the most important category names before or after the parent category name. Test various unique selling points at the beginning or end of the title. Test various title patterns. 